Yeah, you want to look at me. And okay. Think, you can say, do you ask okay. questions. Uh, first, first things first, please just introduce yourself. Give yes. Your name and title. I'm Sergeant Deborah Minot, D E B O R A H M Y N A T T. Uh, we're on day eight now. Yes. Um, since Gannon's disappearance, tell us where we're at now. We saw a lot of activity yesterday and last night at the home. What's the latest update? So we are still continuing um, parallel investigations as well as search efforts for Gannon. Our number one goal is to find Gannon and to bring him home safely. We're not seeing as many, you know, people out uh, on the streets, as you will, as you did over the weekend. They were everywhere. Yes. What's going on today? That's true. So you might not be able to see the larger groups that we had out there, but just please understand that we do still have those search efforts continuing, and they might be at more centralized, more concentrated areas, um, because that investigation led us to those concentrated areas. So just because you don't see the larger groups, you don't see the horses, you don't see the dogs or the search and rescue team, that does not mean that we are not focusing on this investigation. We're absolutely doing that. What could you tell us about having the crime lab at the family's house twice yesterday, first and all day and then back at night? Mm -hmm. So the crime lab is used to, again, get pieces that's a part of the investigation, and that's what they're used for. So they're out there and they, they ensure they're doing this with the proper measures or using gloves or doing different things because they might come across something that might be part of the investigation. So it's very serious work that they have to do step by step, and that might be a need. Part of the investigation requested for them to be out there, and that's why they were there. Sergeant, what can you tell us about this video? So the Sheriff's Office will not be commenting or confirming any specifics of the video that was shared to the media. Um, what we can let you know is that it is in fact a part of our investigation. Do you dispute the neighbor's description of what is seen in that video? We can't confirm any specifics. How big a piece of that um, video is, is in your investigation? So right now I can't, I can't give you a scale on how big one part is in comparison to another, but please understand again, it, any piece in this investigation is big for us. So any even uh, eyewitness, uh, a possible person that uh, maybe they saw somebody in the neighborhood, something suspicious, even if to every you know everyday citizens it might appear to be very small, um, it is to us a very big part. So this video may be a big part um, in that investigation. Therefore, we can't confirm any specifics um, on it. Is the timeline now into question, you know, being put into question? It, the timeline in this entire case is going to be looked at. So our investigators are looking at everything step by step. So just going back to the original release, it says that he was last seen January 27th in his home by his stepmother between 3.15 and 4 o'clock. Um, is that still accurate? That, that piece, yes, that was reported to us the day of, and that piece is, is what is part of the investigation. Is there a suspect at this time? No, I cannot discuss that right now. Any per people of interest or persons of so interest? So please understand that persons of interest could be any person that has information to any case. And so as any investigation, our, our wonderful, talented de detectives take tips and leads and they go until it's exhausted. So any bit of it, they'll go until it's exhausted. And then once that happens during that path of the investigation, we may come across persons of interest. And then again, the specifics of those names of persons of interest, we will not share because again, it's a part of the investigation. And we do not have any suspects at this time. No. Okay. Talk to us about um, the massive social media following, I guess, this mm -hmm. case has brought. There's several search groups for him, community members coming up with all of these hypotheses that, you know, yes. what they think. Is that taking away from your investigations? This, yes. So speculation is one thing and, uh, you know, theories and these kinds of ideas is one thing for someone to have. When they provide that to the sheriff's office, we take it seriously. So any information to any law enforcement agency, if you have a tip or a lead, we have to vet each of those. We have to ensure that it is factual and it takes time away from our um, detectives to try to figure out if this is a good lead or if it's not. And the time that they spend doing that absolutely will take them away from that investigation. So speculation and theories is not something we want you to report. We want you to report the factual information, things that you've seen, and it, it might not even be that Monday. It could have been the week prior. Anything that you might have seen with your own eyes 
is information that we would like for you to provide, not speculation and not theories. So like this neighbor in his videos. I'm just, so if we could also talk about, um, as what Lieutenant Mahalko said in the press conference, although we have to make social media part of the investigation and put it in, our, in, in yes. the investigation, that no leads anymore are going to be followed up unless they are called into the tip line or emailed into the tip line. Okay. I think that's really important. Okay. So if people really want to find Gannon, use those two methods. So we put out social media updates on Gannon Search and um, we use social media for the sharing purposes. Uh, comments sometimes are, are great, but please understand that tips that you provide will only be taken in two methods and that's through our tip line which is 719-520-6666 or through our email which is tips at elpasoco.com. So if they message us, they're using social media to comment, we are not taking those. We are only taking it from those two methods. And then yesterday, I was the first person to bring you this video, yes. and you guys asked me to not share it because you said this will maybe hurt the investigation. Yes. Now we're seeing some station puts it on their yes. you know website. It's going everywhere. What's, what's and, your take on this? And so we, we understand that, media. You guys are, are, are great to work with, and we understand that you were the first that, that called us and actually um, – asked us what, what we thought about it. And we truly appreciate the relationship that you built with us by asking us first before putting it out there. And please understand, we wanted that kept. We wanted that kept because it is a big part of our investigation. And to share it immediately, we hope will not be detrimental. We hope it will not jeopardize the investigation. But the reason we asked you not to do that was because there is potential for that. And as a law enforcement agency, that's the worst that we could do is to purposely, intentionally jeopardize any investigation. So are you still asking us not to put this video out? Yes. If someone were to call me today and ask prior to putting that out there, I would ask the same thing. I know that you don't want to discuss the specifics of it, but as you mentioned, facts are important in this case and yes. how specifically the person who took that video describes this mm -hmm. is a fact of the case. Mm -hmm. So a neighbor describes this video as mm -hmm. showing the stepmother and the 11 year old boy leaving the house several hours later, that stepmother coming back alone. Yes. Do you dispute that description of this well, video? And, and, and just understand, sir, so when we have factual information provided, if it's on a public forum, that could be scrutinized um, when law and order takes place. So information that is factual if it is displayed to where we're seeking potential justice we have to do it in an organized effort we don't want that on a public forum but if if his description is wrong you would want that out there too mm -hmm. if he's saying if he's describing this as something that it's not you would correct yeah. us so we're just trying to make and, sure and, that his description is accurate and is it accurate? And again i can't confirm i can't confirm the specifics in the video i can't and to tell you the truth i haven't seen the video myself I can't confirm it, um, the, and the sheriff's office as a whole will not be commenting on the video that was shared to the media. I have a couple of questions about the stepmother. Um, I read that she rented a car on the day that he went missing, is that accurate? And that's part of the investigation too. And um, is she still cooperating? Part of the investigation. Okay, so you can't yes. say whether or not she's we won't. cooperating. I know before that she was. And a lot, and any any bit of info that might be given um, may per portray the wrong judgment, and we don't want to do that as the sheriff's office. Is he still considered a missing persons investigation, or he, has it become criminal? It is missing persons, endangered, because of those factors, again, with the weather, his age, and medication he was taking, and also the time frame. And so going into their homes, I mean, we saw, obviously, their video of Metro Crime Lab there and everything. Yes. Um, you know, what would you say to the community saying that this, this isn't criminal, but you do have a going in and, and taking evidence out of the home. Um, can you talk to that a little bit? And you know, just as an example, we used a search and rescue dog who had a really strong scent and, and we, we, we get pieces of information that might not be criminal, that might just lead to um, where he might be, um, those kinds of things. And so when we get those pieces of evidence, it has to be maintained and protected. And again, that's why we use Crime Lab. They're really good with that. They're experts in the field, and that's why we do that. So it might not be criminal, and there are some cases where Crime Lab is involved and it's not criminally involved. To all the people who are following this and, and praying for this young boy's return, uh, just like everyone in our, the community is, yes. I mean, 
Is there anything that you can give us for an update for them? You, do you feel like you're getting closer? Do you hope something will come up in the next few days? Just please entrust the, the process. And, and I understand, um, you know, coming from um, an agency, we, we, there are so many of us that are parents here, and we understand um, this is a devastating, um, you know, just to imagine, it's very devastating if that were you um, in the parents' shoes. And so please understand that this is sometimes a slow process, and I know that might be frustrating, but we have very skilled people here at our agency and we have skilled resources that we're using with the FBI, with the Colorado Springs Police Department and a lot of different um, resources that we're using to put the best method together because again all of them, each of them that have put passion into this case are thinking of Gannon and every it doesn't matter what piece that they have of this pie, they are thinking of Gannon and they want to bring him home safely. Can you um, just kind of reiterate for some of the people the timeline, you know, I think we've all heard a little bit of a different thing. Um, he was at school, he wasn't at school, um, he was on a hike. Can you go into any of that? We can't, unfortunately, I can't talk about those specifics. Are you still saying that he went missing between 3 and 4 o'clock? That was the only information relayed to us, and therefore, the, f the first day that the um, reporting party called in, that was indicated to us. That was the bit of information we had to work with. There were some other factors and information obtained during that call um, that we type-coded him as a runaway because of information we received. But and that reporting... That? When was he reported missing? That was the evening of Monday the 27th, which was approximately um, 6.55 p.m. And that was reported by the stepmother, is that correct? Yes. So that original timeline that was just asked about is based uh, based upon the initial call from the stepmother? Yes. Okay. If this um, video from the neighbor would have been released on Monday when he was still considered a runaway, would it have been in the public's eye? I'm not sure. Not sure. Is, are you guys, so you're still assuming, are you assuming he's dead or alive? I'm not going to comment on that at this point. No, we, always hope we have yeah, the best we have the best hope um, that um, he is alive and we're going to find him and bring him home and that is again each of the people that are involved in this investigation all have that same hope have you spoken to the stepmother since that piece of video came to light yesterday I can't comment on that and just one last question um, the neighbor that we spoke to said that when detectives originally came to his house, they looked at those hours around three and four, and then it wasn't until later um, that he decided to look back and see that video. So are you guys looking at a wider scope now, now that you know? That I don't, yeah, I won't be able to comment on that either. Do you encourage people to do what this neighbor did and to look back and see if there is any other info they can give to you guys? Absolutely. Um, so again, just not um, any bit of information could help. So if you do have those video cameras and you live in that neighborhood, we absolutely ask that you look through those. And I know some of them are timed out, you know, seven day captures and things like that. So um, it might not just be a focus on the Monday, focus on days prior. Anything, any bit of information is very valuable to this case and to, to provide that to us. Not in a public forum, but to provide that to us through those two outlets that I shared earlier. Anything else? No. Thank you.